Hey everybody, this is Joel and Paul, hey. Travis and Edgar. Hi. <laughs> well, they're not from moving to Mexico. Paul and I are, but they are from one of, I guess, one of our my first memories of eating in Mexico. <laughs> Something very, very special because I think we had this party at Casita Adelaide, which was the very first house that we bought, and you guys had come, and that was when you were going like people's houses and yeah. creating these magnificent meals. And I think we were one of your first customers. You, if not one of the first of you, were definitely... We were, we were up there. <laughs> you had, and you were, we were there giving you a lot yeah, of meals. Yeah. We appreciate that. So there with My Mexican Kitchen, and if you find yourself in Bucerias, in the near term, in the long term, you definitely have to book one of their cooking classes, you do demonstrations, and you guys are also starting to do like a walk and talk taco tour now. We're yeah. there. Yeah, that's pretty cool, and we'll have to do that. We have to come back and do a taco Tuesday <laughs> with these guys when they do their, their local walkabout too. Hey, Paul? Sounds good. So anyways, we're here today uh, to do a little bit of a cooking show, and um, I'm gonna like show a little bit about some Mexican beers, a nice Mexican wine that I, I got to pair with the upcoming meal. But before I go into that, why don't you guys actually I'm gonna I gotta I gotta deal with something right away, just in case anyone's asking all about the cubra boca, the mass thing. But you know, we have a very, very small social bubble as do you guys here. Like we would go out no problem with dinner with the, the two of you. We're all kind of in the same social bubble. We'd be sitting around a table like this with four, maybe six of us max. So that's why we don't have the masks on today. If there were other clients in here, then we would be masking full up. But because we're all kind of within the same group and we're in this nice dirty <laughs> space, we feel pretty safe and our risk levels are ultra, ultra low. So now that we've got that thing out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about what we came here for and this magnificent dish you're about to make. Yeah, well, thank you for yeah. including us. Yeah, well, no, it's our pleasure. Well. Um, so, obviously not Mexican. Travis, I'm from Oregon, and we've been doing this for about 13, 12, 13, 13 years. years. I'm Edgar, <laughs> by the way, from Puebla. <laughs> from Mexico. And um, part of what we really like to do is show people that there are so many more Mexican dishes than I grew up with. I think part of my job as the non-Mexican and the team is to, to tell Edgar how a lot of non-Mexicans consider Mexican food. And so tonight's dish is something that is something I don't, I've never seen in the States anyway, and um, kind of a quintessential nice warming dish called mole de olla. Mole yeah. de olla. Mole de olla, okay. exactly. Yeah, this dish, for example, is very typical to eat a lot in the center of the country. You have to travel Mexico City, Mexico State, Puebla, Oaxaca, wherever you go, you find like a little bit different variations, but basically like a kind of soup with meat and vegetables. Okay. This soup, we really, really love it to show to the non-Mexicans because it's different and unique. You are going to find a lot of different mix of flavors. You see cumin, clove, cilantro, cinnamon, and of course chiles. This chile is amazing. You're going to see we are using many of them, but the soup is definitely not spicy. Okay. So it really is interesting. A lot of flavors, a lot of texture, and not spicy. So basically, when people say mole, they are thinking mole poblano, but sometimes they don't realize that in Mexico exists many kind of moles. How many different moles are there? It's well, like hundreds, well, thousands? <laughs> well, not, not thousands, but I think like a, over 20 different ones. Only in Oaxaca, for example, they have seven moles. Right. We call like that. Mole de olla, eight. Mole poblano, nine. So almendrado, wherever you find different kind of moles. And mole basically in Mexico is describing the texture of the sauce. Mm -hmm. So like a thick sauce. So this soup, for example, it started with like a thick sauce and normally you cook it like a clay pot dishes in the old days, the grandma, at least my grandma, that's what I used to cook. <laughs> so you present the dish there. Here we're going to do like a little more modern yeah. style of cooking like a regular pots, but basically that's how you present this dish. Because olla is pot, so mole in a pot. Mole so in a pot. Then you thin it out and make it a soup. And then, well, how do we translate mole? Mole, and that's the thing, there is no translation, yeah. it's, a, it's a, thick a thick yeah. sauce. Yeah, okay. so versus like, like a tomato based yeah. or a tomatillo sauce, like the enchilada sauces are thinner. The mole is kind of like, a, Edgar describes like a curry texture. Okay. Yeah. Like a mole normally because you find salsas that work for tacos normally, sauces that is like a main dish, like enchilada sauce, and moles is more kind of thick sauce and the mostly of them is in base of many kind of chiles normally dry, 
and different spices like cinnamon, cumin, sometimes you find nuts like pepper, pepper, peanuts, pine nuts, uh -huh. so it's not unusual to find that, so it's like a thick sauce. Excellent. So then instead of just having a brothy type soup, this is more like a meal. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, I, yeah. I describe it kind yeah. of almost like a stew. Right. Um, and you can kind of thin it out as much as wanted. But for, for those watching from Canada or the States, if you're somewhere cold, this is a super delicious warming option to, to make you think of Mexico. I think you call comfort food. Comfort food. <laughs> and we, and we can uh, get the recipe from you guys and put it on the video. Sure. Yeah. Actually, secret. we printed it okay. out there. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I did, I did bring, just put out some chiles here because in our classes we talk a lot about the chiles because I don't know, the, the other ingredients you saw for the mole, the olla, the carrots, the potatoes, the zucchinis, nothing special about there. It's all about these guys. And um, you know, you've got your itty bitty ones, typically spicy. And these, the smaller ones used a lot in um, salsas. And then as you get into your bigger chiles over here, you know, the medium size can be salsas or sauces. And then the big ones are typically more in salt, you know, sauces and mm -hmm. soup bases because they're typically not spicy. So you can use a lot of them like in tonight's dish and you don't get the spiciness. You're not going to get that fire. Yep. Okay. So, but um, if you put like a thousand, in there, <laughs> if we base the, <laughs> the soup in that, yeah, you, yeah everybody's going to cry. Right. <laughs> so yeah, in class, for example, we talk like the chili, the chili talk. We talk a lot about chili because really what makes Mexican food different and unique I say like Mexicans, is the different kind of chiles that we have in Mexico. 64 different chiles and with that you create all the cuisine of the country. Basically the cuisine is in focus of a chile because tomato, onion, garlic, Travis said, you find in different cuisines but Mexican cuisine is definitely about the chile. And I think a lot of people make the wrong assumption that all Mexican food is spicy and when it's yes. really not. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that chiles are always yeah. spicy. So I think people say, oh, is there chili in it? Oh, okay, no. But yeah, these, these, these big ones here, you know, you can make some, uh, some of these are in those moles. Yeah. And they make delicious sauces. Some, there's a sauce we do for pork with this one. It's a little bit, this one's a little sweet. Um, and it's almost all chili in that sauce, but because this particular chili typically is not spicy, your sauce isn't gonna come out spicy. So you can play with it. Excellent. All right, you getting hungry? I'm getting really hungry. <laughs> I did not eat much today just for this reason. <laughs> I was going to save a little appetite. Here's the problem when you're doing Taco Tuesdays all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you like 10 tacos to do demonstrations. Uh, yeah. Well, this will be something a little different for you. Yeah, excellent. Perfect. So about this soup, what we're going to start doing is we're using this chile. It's called Guajillo. A little uh, about this. I think it's the most used chile in Mexico because you find different, different sauces and salsas and moles with this chile. It's not as spicy, but very flavorful. Okay. It's one of my favorite ones, especially for those who doesn't like it spicy. I recommend find your guajillo chile. What we need to do is we fry before we debain and remove the stem, and we have to be toasting them a little bit in like a hot pan. Yep. And later, we have to be rehydrated them. When you toast a chile, release and give it like a different, more uh, concentrated flavor. Right, so it's like releasing those yeah. flavors. It release the flavor, right. exactly. It'll change it, yeah. But do be careful, those dried chiles, if you overcook yeah. them, they turn bitter. Okay. So, if you're just gonna, we've got our kumal here, he was making some tortillas earlier. We are going to eat the homemade <laughs> tortillas. So, we're going to be toasting them, like a little, we call in Mexico, is this terminology that we use a lot, tatemar. And basically, it's like a, the Mexican word for describe toasting things. Sometimes you toast poblanos, in this case, dry guajillos, and they get like a little char, and later we're going to be rehydrating them. This process normally is hand to hand. You, you toast it and boil it. That's normally what you do with dry chiles. And we have some water on, some that we've heated up, and then we're going to put our toasted chiles in there. We've pre cooked our beef, so this. In Mexico, a lot of boiling of meats, which sounds kind of funny to some people. Um, and it's, it's, if you've got bone in there, you're gonna get much better broth. Certain meats you can boil and you know, they'll get nice and tender. Not a, you know, like a pork loin or something, but no fat in there is not gonna work. Now this, is that on a high boil or is it like a low, it's a, it's good, like a lower boil? Like, it's like a like simmer. Right. So bring it to a boil and let it simmer. Um, and so that's already done. 
and that's gonna be the base. So a lot of Mexican, part of, for me, Mexican food, the, the confusion is people don't know those kind of stewy right. dishes. They think of enchiladas or tacos, and there's so many meats in sauces that's more like stew. And I, up in the States anyway, in Oregon, I don't, I don't find those. You don't see it. Yeah, yeah. which I, they're delicious. Like this one, um, not spicy, you know, it yeah. hits all the, the flavor points. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why they they don't make it up to the states. I don't think Canada you see much of this Is either. It's a good birria. Yeah, yeah, I love birria. Exactly. Oh, love birria. And especially where we live Very here, beautiful. here in Buserias, for example, the Ode Bay is hot. For more inland, the weather is different. So you find a lot of soup. Mexicans, we love to eat soups. It's one of the, sometimes the main dish is the soup. It's not like a, the first course. Right, right, so right. you find different kind of soups. You say birria in this region. Well, you find, for example, uh, calotlalpeño from Mexico State. Or you find uh, manchamantel from Oaxaca. So these different kind of soups. And it's very nice because in inland Mexico it's very cold in some part of the, the year. Yeah, especially it's, at night. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it, it can get, it can actually, it can snow in Mexico. I can imagine <laughs> the Canadians, the Americans going, yeah, yeah no. cold. I don't know. Like, <laughs> cold, cold like Canada, no, but definitely <laughs> for Mexicans can be like a little cold. I've been in Toluca in January, ah, and it yeah. can be very, very cold. Yeah. I was. It was one it, degree, it like it just snowed. about freezing. Yeah. yeah, I was in Toluca and it snowed. I'm going to get, of course, we're going to get like a little more modern style. We're not going to do it like uh, in Mexico we call metate, but in Mexicans now the new este, families we use a lot of the blender. So we are going to use in that. And definitely we recommend, if you want to do this, find a good blender. Uh, for example, uh, the, some blender doesn't work very well, so very good one is the key of this soup. We're going to be using a little bit of the water where we boil our chiles, only to be able to blend the uh, mix, and the rest is not. We're going to be adding cumin, peppercorn, cloves in the blender, and we in garlic. My grandpa said the key of a good recipe is garlic. So <laughs> Mexicans, we use a lot of garlic and cinnamon. Cinnamon is one important element that we need to use. People don't release Mexicans, we eat and use a lot of cinnamon. Yeah, that's so just that's canela. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to be blending those. Be careful because it's hot, but we're going to be trying to use a little trick. Mexicans, we are the original MacGyver, Travis said. <laughs> Ready. So you see, you smell it, for example. This recipe is amazing. Travis said, it smells like Christmas, the cinnamon and everything. Mm. It's very tasty. For me, remind me good. always like <laughs> a my grandma yeah. cooking. Yeah, it smells first. <laughs> It does smell like Christmas. I yeah. <laughs> can't put the smell in the video, but yeah. it is very good. <laughs> yeah. The next step we're going to be doing is going to be sazonar the base of the soup, the okay. sauce. Sazonar in Mexico is a step basically you cook always the base of your soup or your sauce and later start adding the rest of the ingredients. So a teaspoon of oil and we're going to be basically strain the sauce and cooking it, bring it to boil. So, and we are going to be doing that. This chile, the only not so good thing about it is the skin is like a little leathery okay. or hard. So even if we blend it, you need to strain it. Okay. Also the peppercorns, the cloves, the cinnamon doesn't break down. Anyway, so, so that'll leave some of that residual yep. ingredients there. Okay. We've had people say, can I do anything with that? It smells so good. Can I try <laughs> it? And it's not a little really. too fibrous no. and chewy. Come and put it down. So basically we're straining it and bring it to boil. And here we are going to be adding the remind of the sauce with a little bit of broth we're going to be using. Yeah. That we already said in Mexico we boil a lot of meats. We boil a lot of este, pork, chicken, beef, lamb. Yeah. Turkey even in mm -hmm. Mexico okay. we eat turkey and we eat boil it for the typical mm -hmm. mole poblano for example in Puebla state the typical is in base of turkey so your next your next thanksgiving dinner can be a boiled turkey and so you see that <laughs> that's a reminder we don't use it for anything 
and here we are basically cooking our sauce. Bring to boil, move it even, and later we're going to be adding our broth and add little by little the vegetable depending what is the harder. So we start with the corn, later we continue with uh, green beans, potato, carrots, and in the end we're going to be adding uh, zucchini flowers. Okay. So the Flor hardest. De calabaza. Yeah. Flor de calabaza. I was going to say, yeah, because in Mexico the corn is actually a white corn, it's like a feed corn. So you don't get the nice sweet corn. So if you're using a nice sweet corn variety from the States or Canada, you don't need to add that at the beginning. This is the same corn they make into corn flour, right, right, right. you know, mm. to make the tortillas. And you don't want sweet tortillas. So you use a corn flour, or a corn that's, it's a starchy, it's kind of, it's more of a texture than a flavor almost. And they say the meat, they say always add or use, if you're using boiling meats, we recommend to use with bone in, skinless, so a little bit of fat, yeah. a little marble, so you want to be using. This one, for example, you go to the carniceria, the butcher, you say, I want a meat for a stew, so they give you chunks of meat with bone in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's called like, stew meat. Like a mm -hmm. shank or like ribs work. In this is particular, it's called the uh, chambarete. Chambarete, That's, sí. It's a good one for boiling in Mexico. Also for birria, you say that, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, so like anyone going to Omega, the butcher, any store, the chambarete is very popular. Like, yeah. And you'll see it because it's always got that bone in the middle. Yeah. And it's pretty, it's pretty well priced. Like you can get a yes. lot for the price per kilo. It's got, it's got a lot of marbling yeah. of fat, so that, you know, that sort of meat, when you boil it, will get tender, unlike, you know, a really lean cut. Yeah. In Mexico, for example, the main star of the dishes is the sauce, always. Okay. The meat, the vegetables, is like uh, extra elements. What is important for us is the sauce. Because that's what all the flavors are going to be. Oh, the flavor. Good. And the meat is the second, or the second mm -hmm. star. So it started like a thick sauce, boiling, and, say, and now you dilute it with more broth, and bring to boil, and when we start adding the vegetables. And little by little, we say, do that. If we need more broth later, we are going to be adding it. In the end, we put the meat here. And so you will not necessarily put that entire broth in there. No. You just do it by eye, yeah, based cal on, cal right. Depend depending on the quantity of the meat. you don't want to thin that sauce out. Exactly like that. You and it's, it's a bit to taste. So some yeah. people like it a bit thicker, a bit stronger. Some people like it a little thinner. I was going to say, one of the things about the fact that in Mexico you get so many good sauces is you actually can make really good vegetarian food because the sauce is made separate from the meat. So we do like a, a pumpkin seed sauce yeah. and then you can put it on vegetables and stuff. And so, and part of here in Mexico, the, the economy, maybe the, the home economy, you couldn't have big pieces of meat for everybody right. in the family. But lots of great sauce, and you fill it out with vegetables and a little bit of meat, and you've got a great meal. And then you got a big dinner. So we continue with the green beans. So we have the corn. The corn here in Mexico, Charlie said, you need to cook it a little bit more. The green beans. And we have to bring to boil. Boil like another three or four minutes, and we are going to be adding the rest. And we come back. It's funny, when people come to Mexico, they always get Corona, they get Pacifico, but Mexico now is having. The, the, it's like a beer revolution happening. Mm -hmm. There's so many small brewers, you know, making a lot of great arsenal beers. Now, Minerva is not necessarily a small brewer, but they are doing arsenal beers. They ended up buying up, I think, a bunch of smaller uh, brewers and then kind of consolidated into this brand. But I will say that they do a really good job at making it. And if I'm going to buy a beer that I'm going to pair with food, and I'm not just sitting at the beach to knock down a cold one, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having a chrome, sorry. Just not gonna happen. It's one of these. So I like to start with a little IPA, and uh, this one's six and a half percent. I have had it before. You know, very, uh, a lot of, very hoppy, a lot of nice fruity notes. So this would actually pair pretty well with the stew. Gracias. And you know what, a good IPA, yes. it's got a, because some people like to have a cocktail over dinner, mm -hmm. right? But then you have a cocktail, maybe with two to three ounces of alcohol, but then you want to have wine with dinner, it's almost like that cocktail puts you over the edge, but it gets you feeling, <laughs> it gets you kind of feeling nice, right? And your, your belly's opening up, so a lot of times I'll do the IPA because you get a little bit of a higher alcohol content, but it's not the same as like a three ounce martini or mm -hmm. like a really strong margarita. So six and a half percent, you know, one of these, uh, yeah, it'll jumpstart you. <laughs> Cheers. Salud. 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 Mm. 
very good. It's nice. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Uh, hoppy, but not too bitter, and it's got that like fruitiness to it, and but not too fruity. So I think it would still mm -hmm. you know, stand up to to the stew. Now we are going to be adding the potatoes, and I think we are missing a little bit broth, so we're adding a little bit more, and that's how I do that. Some people they put a lot of broth already but I like a little bit more consistency. Why did you think that it needed more broth? Because we're going to be adding more vegetables uh -huh. and also we're adding the meat, so it needs to be covered. Okay. It's not like, it's, it's a soup, so it needs to be mm -hmm. covered. That is say, I don't like too much runny because I feel like you're missing the uh, flavor of the Louis dead. Mm -hmm. But that's my personal opinion. Some recipes also are good, but more liquid. That's mm -hmm. not bad, it's only like a two-taste. Well, on this side, if we, need, if we need a little bit more. No, we don't need it more. Good salt? No, good salt. All right. yeah, the broth is already salt, but with okay. salt. From salt to beer. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to go with the, the, next, uh, the next beer. It's a Vienna style lager. And, um, and this is from Jalisco. So this was, Minerva was born in Jalisco. And there's a little bit of a story behind it because Minerva is the diosa. Minerva is the patrona de, de artesanos. Mm -hmm. So it's the, um, the the supporter of the artists, I guess, right? Yeah. And beer is and that's what are, <laughs> So I'll drink to that. <laughs> so this one's going to be a little bit more on the darker side, the Vienna style, so malty. Again, I think it'll pair pretty well with the uh, the meat stew. Well, know, yeah. I'm going to put that aside just to give it a shot um, as well with the vino tinto. All right, one for you, you. one for you, <laughs> one for yes. me, and Salud. another salute. Salud. Salud. So how did you guys meet? Through a friend. Yeah. yeah. And here in Mexico or in the States or? In Mexico. Okay. I was uh, at that moment only touristing. Yeah. I want to be outside my comfort area, Puebla, where I'm from. All my lovely there, my family, everybody is there. So I want to explore a little bit. So, Vallarta. I met Travis and that's uh, how yeah. we start the business. And he stayed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, or you stayed. You no, stayed I actually, I've been Mexico? here no. maybe four years. Okay. Four or five years. Okay. So yeah, it was funny. He'd just been moved here at, and had been here a month when we met. And, uh, and it was funny because I, I'd asked a different friend. I said, hey, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, cooking classes because there used to be a place that did French cooking classes. Yeah. And I thought, why doesn't anybody do Mexican food? You know, mm -hmm. and I, Go ahead. No, I was just saying, is that the dad of uh, uh -huh. right. Sandrine? Sandrine, yep. um, And I, I worked in restaurants for many years, but never really Mexican food. And yeah, I had a little bit under my belt, but not enough to really give classes. And so I asked this friend and she was like, oh, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. And years later, I realized Mexicans, nobody goes on vacation and takes a cooking class. So, you know, I think she was just like, okay, that's not gonna work. Not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> who, who's going to pay for that? Also yeah. in the beginning, my, when we started doing this, basically I grew up cooking all my life. My grandpa from my mom's side had like a little restaurant. My grandpa from my dad's side also. So everybody cooks in food. So I grew up there. I grew up sailing and working and making tamales, tacos, tortas, enchiladas, everything possible in food. So I grew up in the kitchen of my, my family. Of course, a little Mexican family, around 25 uncles and aunts, <laughs> and everybody works in food. So, but in the beginning, when they say, what do you do in Vallarta? I say, I only work in food, but what do you do? Like, yeah. uh, because it was very hard to explain that I teach cooking classes. Right. Because I, people pay for that. Like <laughs> I so, and the, the carrots are almost done. And when do we put in the meat? The meat is warm, the meat is warm, but we need to basically Trying to get a uh, mix in the soup. So, so some here, is, for example, this one is called neck. It's the neck of the beef. So also have a bone. Also the bone here is not anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's tender. And a little bit more. You see here is it's also like a nice. And here you see the onion, garlic, that's how we boil our meat. A little bit more. If we are mixing it. There we go. It's, it's 
almost ready. <laughs> Very good. How long do you leave that in there? It's only like a, a couple of minutes when uh -huh. you're adding the zucchinis. Okay. Mix everything. The beef itself cooked for like two hours? Ah, the, yeah. The, it's the already beef. cooking for two hours. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. beef okay. cooked for two hours. So it really is just incorporating it into the sauce. Yeah. It doesn't really have to And cook. that's why you can make it vegetarian. You could yeah. do this dish vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Okay. And split it. And yeah, yeah. yeah, for mixed company. Yeah. yeah. And works. it's interesting. I think sometimes people see, you know, you see that sauce, it's deep red and you think red is spicy, you know? Guajillo makes a really red sauce or salsa, not spicy. Not spicy. So yeah, sometimes people, chiles are spicy, red is spicy. There's some mis I, misinformation. I always say that if you see a dish that is very red main dish and it's not spicy, almost very sure it's in base of Guajillo. Okay. It's, Birria is in base of Guajillo. Sometimes tacos al pastor, carne enchilada, este, red enchiladas. Uh, this kind of mole de olla, misiotes, mm -hmm. all of them are in base of guajillo chile. So this chile is, I think, is the most used chile in Mexico because guajillo. it's guajillo. You guys gotta remember that. Actually, remember that. Remember that for a future video. I don't know. It could be a month from now. It could be two months from now. But that's gonna be an answer. I guarantee you. Guajillo chile. I, yeah, I think. <laughs> How's it ready? Looking really good. <laughs> so good. So it's ready, it's time to eat. It's time to eat. So, thank you for joining us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy it, you like it. So little by little, and you basically you pick a little bit of everything. So this is something really easy someone could do at home. It, it, may, it may take them a little time, yep. the technique down, the flavors, but it's not complicated, it's not complicated. And, and also you know what if you don't have the squash blossoms don't give up yeah. don't do squash blossoms yeah. you're fine um the only thing that maybe might be a little hard to find depending where you are could be those guajillo chiles but these days with the internet you can find every you know get everything on the internet so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add we're going to put a squeeze of lime in there okay a lot of the chiles the flavor is kind of a little bit um, earthy, right? And so you want to give something that's going to brighten up your dish, kind of bring back the freshness. And a lot of times that's going to be limes. So, in general, with the savory food, those key limes are great options. So these. And why the key lime versus? The key lime is actually a much has much more tartness right, versus, and yeah. yeah the big lime that the, unfortunately the ones i think you find mostly in the canada and states those big limes are sweeter right so um in general if you can find the little key limes they just have a little more of a kind of an acidity that adds a nice touch to to this dish in particular and you see in mexico we put lime in everything <laughs> Not Taco, just margaritas. You know, no, no beer and margaritas. Tacos, uh, soups, uh, stews. Even potato chips. Yeah. yeah. Potato chips. <laughs> Pizza. Pizza. Popcorn. Pizza. Popcorn. <laughs> yeah. It's true. A beer. So, a beer, <laughs> yeah. So is that funny. just presentation? Or yeah. Or, yes. or would you eat that too? You can eat yeah, that. Can yeah. Eat it. Yes. It's only like a. We make a little bit prettier. We say so. you eat first with your eyes. But, but this is also very impressive for someone to make this for guests to come over. They think, wow. oh yeah. my god, you've been cooking all day to make this, right? But look at that. You've, yeah. learned, you've learned how to make something very beautiful and I'm assuming very tasty. <laughs> Other than the beef that cooked for two yeah. hours, the rest of it? Yeah, quite pretty a straightforward. Pretty quick but if process. someone has a slow cooker or whatever too, they could stew the beef in that yeah. and just set it aside and yeah. Can't enjoy that beautiful stew with a, a little wine. And this is from Aguas Calientes, which is in, uh, in kind of like we call it the triangle, <clears throat> the wine triangle. So this, uh, these grapes are growing at about 1800 meters above sea level. And this is 100% Nebbiolo. Um, so this particular, this particular uh, Nebbiolo is pretty light. So I think it's gonna pair well uh, with the stew. It's also got a little bit of pepperiness to it and I think just but it's not peppery as in spice. I think it's just really mm. going to complement the spices that you already have in the stew. 
But where did you pick that bottle up? Um, I, you could buy this at, uh, I got this at Mega. Okay. So that's the, the main grocery store here in Mexico. And you can also order it online on, in Mercado Libre. So you can, oh. you can buy your wine online. Mercado Libre is like the Amazon of Mexico or Latin America. So you could put the lateral in Mercado Libre and you could order it. It'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> Two days. Perfect. Max. Tortillas is the best friend of Mexicans. I say that. Everything is with tortillas. And depending where you're from, I'm from inland Mexico, from in the center of the country, next to Mexico City, Puebla. So corn flour tortilla mostly there. Some Mexicans, especially for the northern Mexico, they eat a lot of wheat flour tortillas. So this one is homemade, fresh made before, so we're only reheating them. Buen provecho. Buen provecho. <laughs> the funny thing is these, these wajillo, the, the sauces made with the wajillos stain your clothes horribly. So, <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> I'm glad I wore my red shirt. <laughs> Here in Mexico, you're hanging out in the sun and you're in good shape. But if you don't have a lot of sun to hang it out to, that can be an issue. Yeah, really, really good, guys. Delicious. Yeah, Yeah, that wahio is just so nice, right? It's just, it's like a robust flavor, but not overpowering, and it mm -hmm. just, I don't know. It's funny because it's, it's very balanced in the entire sauce, right? It's one of the few chiles that you can use with any protein. You can use it with seafood, scallops, and you can use it with lamb, you know, which lamb is a much stronger flavor. Gold oh. lamb, yeah, yeah. So how was it, Joel? I, I have no words. <laughs> it really was that good. And these guys are already finished, but I have been. It's like a good bottle of wine or a good glass of wine. You you gotta enjoy every little bit of it. So I've been I've been slowly but surely finishing plus a little pairing of this beautiful Nebbiolo. Good choice. Which you guys enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, that was a super yeah, combination. Definitely was a very good oh, mix, very good yeah, pairing. Yeah. The stew, the stew was uh, off the charts. So I'm gonna try to make this as well. And we're gonna put the recipe down in the, in the not in the comments, in the description. And also go to our blog because that's where we're really gonna start to put additional detail uh, other than just the words. So maybe we'll give you some hints and comments uh, about how to really make that recipe, uh, that recipe fly. Pop. Yeah. <laughs> yep. okay. Thank you for visiting us and only for to know we are in mymexicankitchen.com, www.mymexicankitchen.com and you find all the information from us. And you guys do online classes now? Yep, so we've been, you know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta make your, your business uh, friendly with, yeah. with the times. And so, yeah, we're doing Zoom classes. You can find that on our Facebook page, My Mexican Kitchen. And um, yeah, we're glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for including us. Awesome. And put some comments below, everybody. Like, well, number one, if you think this was awesome, uh -huh. you gotta hit that Should thumb. Should we do more of these kind of videos? We need more, yeah. Do we do more of these videos? And please hit the thumb. Um, comment below uh, about what you liked about it, what you'd also like to see. And you know, do, do you wanna see us come back? to visit these guys again and like maybe cook a different dish, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm putting y'all on the spot. Uh, but let us know below and uh, definitely we want to be back. I want to do the taco tour, the walking taco tour, but it would be nice to come back and do another another dish like this. And maybe I can get my hands dirty too. There you go. Okay. Maybe we can do like a Mexican-Canadian cook-off. There you go. <laughs> barbecue versus Mexican barbecue. Hey. From salsas. Salsas. Okay, everybody, thanks again. Uh, again, hit the like, hit subscribe, put some comments below. And until the next episode, nos vemos, hasta luego, and put it over to these guys to say adios. Adios. adios.